The Department of Justice last week sent a letter to 44 states on the same day Trump's Election Integrity Commission sent their own letter to all 50 states asking for voter registration information to help them investigate voter fraud, which really doesn't exist. A letter went to state election officials asking them about their procedures for complying with the National Voter Registration Act, or NVRA, when they removed people from voting lists. The letter said they wanted to ensure that states, quote, conduct a general program that makes a reasonable effort to remove the names of ineligible voters from the statewide voter registration list due to death or change of residence. Former DOJ officials say the information they requested is not controversial. But what is so unusual is that the letter went out to so many states at one time. Vanita Gupta, the former head of the DOJ Civil Rights Division, who is now head of the uh, Coalition of Civil Rights Organization, uh, this is what she said. She suspected an ulterior motive. Quote, these two letters sent on the same day are highly suspect and seem to confirm that the Trump administration is laying the groundwork to suppress the right to vote. It's not normal for the Department of Justice to ask for voting data from all states covered by the National Voter Registration Act. It's likely that this is instead the beginning of an effort to force unwanted voter purges. And again, she now heads a leadership conference on civil rights. And the NVRA was enacted in 1993 to help people register to vote. It was also known as the Motor Voter Law for requiring states to offer voter registration at state motor vehicle agencies. A Justice Department official denies there was any coordination with the Election Integrity Commission. Joining us right now is Stephen Spalding, attorney and chief of strategy and external affairs for Common Cause. Also joining us on the panel, Wendy Osefo, political analyst and professor of education at John, John Hopkins University. Uh, Pastor, uh, first of all, Barbara Arnwine. Of course, the founder of the Transformative Justice Coalition, and we have uh, Shannon Wright, third vice chairman of the Maryland GOP. Here's what's interesting when you see what's going on here. It's one after another. Now we have Chris Kobach mm -hmm. now lying and changing his story in court, saying, oh, no, we're, not, we, we, we're now only going to hold this information on computers in the White House. <laughs> it's not going to be anywhere else. And, and you're going... This makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Roland. It's really troubling on, on many fronts. First of all, we know that Chris Kobach, the vice chair of this commission, has really been the architect for voter suppression across the country. He is the mastermind behind some of the strictest forms of photo ID identification. He's uh, demanding that citizens provide documentary proof of citizenship, their passports when they, when they register to vote, making it much harder to access the ballot box. That's one issue. And then you also raise now the, the national security issue. So, you know, he sent out this letter, his commission sent out a letter, and we've seen a bipartisan rebuke by more than 48, well, about 48 states have said they're not going to fully comply with this request because they can't trust that voters' private data is going to be safeguarded. So there's all kinds of legal issues that have popped up, privacy implications, whether they even have the authority to ask for this information. And to think that it's going to be held uh, at, the, at the White House under Vice President Pence's control is incredibly troubling. And I think it lays out exactly what you were talking about, that this is another brick in the road to making it harder for eligible Americans to vote. And what they're doing is, again, this is all about shaving votes off. Go to my iPad, please, Shelley. Uh, this is a piece that was in ProPublica. They talked to a 30-year legislator in Wisconsin, uh, Dale Schultz, who said, one, he regretted his votes uh, when it came to the voter bill they passed, which voters would have to produce certain types of identification. Early voting was reduced. Restrictions on absentee balloting were implemented. Time frames for how long people had to be residing in the state before they could vote were lengthened. Yeah. He says in this piece that he challenged his fellow Republicans to provide him with proof of voter fraud. They could not. They kept saying, oh, they're busting people in from Chicago. No proof whatsoever. And he said he had his own staff partner with former journalists. And what they discovered is that two cases of voter fraud both involve Republicans. You know, that, that's voter fraud. Look, no one wants fraud in our elections. We all want modern, secure elections. Uh, the issue is, I think, the real fraud is you have these politicians that are manipulating the rules uh, to make it harder to vote. You know, no eligible American should find themselves kicked out of a polling place because they didn't produce the specific form of ID uh, that, the, that some politician is requiring, a specific form of ID that we know uh, disproportionately affects communities of color, disproportionately affects the elderly, disproportionately affects uh, students, and it's really un-American. But here's a piece, though, and this is what I think also has to happen. I'm going to go to our panel in a second. This is where 
elderly whites and young whites are going to have to stand up because the only people who seem to be aggressive, I'm talking about in terms of the people, aggressive in talking about voter suppression are African Americans and Latinos. But voter suppression is impacting uh, whites in this country as well. We saw a clerk uh, in Wisconsin in 2016 say point blank she was not going to have an early voting site on a college campus because too many young folks there were voting. They moved it off of campus. That impacts young whites. Absolutely. I mean, it affects Americans across the political spectrum. Um, young, old, black, white, rich, poor, everyone is affected by these laws that are, again, intentionally designed to make it harder to vote, to put up barriers to the ballot box. We are seeing, I do just, there is some positive news. There are states that are making, that are, that are reducing these barriers. Just last week, right before the 4th of July, Rhode Island passed automatic voter registration. Illinois passed automatic voter registration. Ways that we can modernize our elections so that people can vote the way they should in the 21st century. Uh, Wendy, uh, Barbara, uh, Shannon, again, I, I know somebody at home was probably saying, all right, I mean, you guys do this story a whole lot, but the reality is, well, I don't think what people understand is how pervasive this is mm -hmm. when you say we're going to reduce early vote. North Carolina, the federal judge court said they had a laser-like focus of African Americans. Well, they specifically asked, when do black folks vote? Mm -hmm. They came back, they said 70% of black folks vote in the first week of early voting. So what did they do? Reduced all early voting in the entire state to only one location for the first couple That's of right. weeks. And right. so again, this, this is very targeted and we're seeing it state by state by state by state mm -hmm. by state. Mm -hmm. This is another example of how the Trump administration continues to unilaterally and systematically roll back the civil rights and civil liberties of people in this country and especially minorities. We cannot continue to underscore that point any more than we are saying today. Furthermore, with every stroke of the pen, they are showing, and this administration continues to show, that they do not care about the rights of black and brown people in this country. And that needs to be said. And I think what Roland said that's really important is this has to be not just individuals who fit those protective classes of black and brown individuals. This also has to be a conversation around individuals who consider themselves allies, who consider themselves Americans, saying this is a democracy and we cannot have anybody. We're talking about Russia. Let's talk about the people with Within this government what are the people within this government doing to make it so our democracy is weakened so we cannot do this anymore. Barbara I'll say this you've heard people say uh, that Russia is the biggest foe to our democratic institution of voting I disagree it's Trump the biggest the biggest uh, barrier uh, the biggest opponent to democracy in our election is the Republican Party well let's just be very clear we said from the beginning that Jeff Sessions should be, never should have been confirmed, that he would create a department of injustice, especially when it came to voting rights, when it came to civil rights, and look what he's done. The Department of Justice in the Texas case should be in there saying, put the Texas under the jurisdiction of the federal courts for ongoing pre-clearance for any voting law that they come up with. When they're intentionally discriminating against blacks and browns and poor people, they should be under federal court supervision. That's the, what the Justice Department should be doing. The second thing is that the Justice Department, this whole urging of people to follow the NVRA to distort what the National Voter Registration Act is, an act that I helped to write. Listen, the bottom line is that this purging of voters should not be occurring. We need voters to be able to do their work and to do, be able to, you know, participate in our democracy, uh, expand the democracy, Sh not restrict it. Shan, this goes beyond the Trump administration. We saw a few years ago in Maine where voters said we want same-day voter registration. The legislature comes back and votes to remove it. The voters had to get a petition, put it back on the ballot in 2016 to say, no, we want it. They didn't ask anybody. They just said, we're going to do it. We're seeing this in state capitals in Iowa, in Florida, in Michigan, in North Carolina, in Alabama, so this, so this, 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 this goes beyond Trump. This is a clear Republican Party plan. See, I hear you, and I, I expect you to say that. 
Um, but as a Republican, I can't go along. I can't. I, I don't agree with that. But, but the and facts I'm gonna are there. Why. It, Let me tell you why. Is it, is it, it is not just Republicans. And I'll tell you why. In Baltimore, in the past election cycle, there was primary. Votes were certified. There were irregularities. The votes were uncertified, decertified for every vote on the ballot in the city of Baltimore. There's no Republicans elected in Baltimore. There haven't been any in over 70 years. No, here's what I'm talking about, Shannon. I'm talking about legislature after legislature passing laws, not just voter IDs. You saw Ken Blackwell, who's on this integrity commission, when he was Secretary of State, when he was also the co-chair of the Bush Cheney Re-election Committee, where they then said, oh no, the law says that the weight of the paper has to be a certain weight. So if it's not 70 pounds per whatever, and it's on 60 pounds sheet of paper, that's invalidated. Are you tell? That was Republican Secretary of State. We are seeing in Iowa Republicans are moving when it comes to voter ID. We're seeing it in Michigan. We saw the head of the Republican Party in Pennsylvania in 2012 say out of his mouth, we, Mitt Romney, will win because of voter ID. When the attorney, when they got sued, the Attorney General of Pennsylvania had to file a document with, with, the, with the court, and the document stated, we have no proof of voter fraud, and they said, even if we had this voter ID, that would not guarantee there'll be no voter fraud. Every time, Texas, when they, when they got sued, they went to the courts and came up with 12 cases of voter fraud, of suspected voter fraud, in 10 years. An analysis has been done showing that you can get hit by lightning uh, more than when it comes to voter fraud. Now, please explain to me why Republican legislature at state after state after state is implementing voter suppression. I don't think it's being looked at that way as voter suppression. What are you, I'm not but Shannon, it it's happening. I'm not saying that the way you see it is incorrect, but what I'm saying is the perception from folks and why they're doing what they're doing is not quite the way it's being presented. Steven. You know what's uh, amazing to me here? <laughs> The Supreme Court, when they gutted the heart of the Voting Rights Act yes. just a few years yeah. ago, this was yes. the first yeah, presidential yeah. election, even the, the majority of the Supreme Court said discrimination in voting exists, no one doubts that, and this Congress has done absolutely nothing, nothing to look into the issue. We had the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Bob Republican Goodlatte. Republican Bob Goodlatte he said, from Virginia, he said, who will not schedule even a hearing, a hearing so, to discuss he it. He said nobody's presented any evidence. Well, we went down to Roanoke, a huge coalition of organizations went down to Roanoke to say we have the evidence. The evidence is in court. As you said, a court just recently said with surgical precision these bills have been enacted to discriminate against voters of color. That is the purpose of most of these laws. It's very clear. It's right in the legislative record. And unfortunately, we have a Congress that could act. We have a bipartisan bill to strengthen the Voting Rights Act, to respond to the court, to modernize it. And we've seen nothing. But unfortunately, at this point, I think the courts are going to be the first line of defense until people get out and vote. Shannon, I'm sorry. I don't know how you cannot see this is a targeted effort by Republicans in state after state to suppress voters. It is clear. The evidence is clear. And we're, we're not talking about one state or two or three or five or ten. We're talking about state after state. When it comes to folks in Florida removing folks from the voting rolls uh, who actually were, were, were uh, legally uh, able to vote. When you see what happened in Alabama and Mississippi and Texas, you're seeing it all across this country. Don't even attempt to say this is not by design by Republicans. It's clear. It's clear. The evidence is there. Steven, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. We come. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.